I've enjoyed teaching at the University of Chicago remarkably well. I've been doing it since 1968. I love teaching undergraduates. I love teaching graduate students. I've had some of the finest young scholars in the world come through my graduate seminars, but equally pleasurable is to be able to take students who've never even thought about music before and try to teach them something about how to listen. There is an enormous amount of detective work involved in doing editions of this kind. Perhaps the most surprising things we've turned up have been one Rossini score and one Verdi score. The Rossini score was called Il Viaggio a Reims, The Voyage to Reims, and it was a festival opera written to celebrate the coronation of Charles X in 1825. Everybody thought it was lost, but it wasn't lost, and a group of my students and myself set out to put it together, and we had a great deal of fun doing it. There are sources everywhere, from Paris to New York to, uh, to Vienna uh, to Italy, and we needed to coordinate all of this to be able to produce an appropriate score. The history is part of understanding the music. You've got to see how the music fits into a historical framework. One has to understand that musical theater is a continuum and that to separate out a kind of opera that was done in certain opera houses during the 17th, 18th, and 19th, and early 20th centuries from the rest of it makes no sense. These are part of genres that have a relationship with one another. And to, to say that, for example, we can't take seriously uh, Gershwin's Porgy and Bess because it was written for Broadway makes no sense to me at all. I insist that, that we have to think about musical theater as an entire spectrum of possibilities of which a certain kind of European opera from the 19th century and the late 18th and 19th century is just a part of the story. It's an important part of the story. It was a very important development in the story, but it's not the whole story.